Welcome back, everybody, to the Cleveland Guardians franchise here on MLB The Show 22. Today is a pretty big episode. We have made it to the trade deadline here in year number three. And we've got some big decisions to make on the long-term future and the short-term future of this ball club. We're 61-48. and 48. We are currently second place in the division. And we've been playing pretty well overall since the All-Star break, albeit we have not played against anybody over 500. But for the most part, we've been pretty good since the break. And we're in an interesting spot because we are the number one wild card in the American League, albeit it is a pretty weak wild card race. But there are some teams who are not too far behind us and Toronto. So if some of those teams behind us get hot these last two months, then we could be in danger of losing our spot, especially because we've been playing borderline 500 baseball since the start of May. We've got to figure out how we can improve this lineup and the pitching rotation for this year, but also for the future as well. I want to keep a long-term outlook while also making this team a little bit better. I think we have to add an arm to the starting rotation. Our rotation is just way too inconsistent. Maybe a bullpen arm, maybe another bat. Wouldn't mind adding either of those as well, but I think adding a starter should be the top priority for us because other than Shane Bieber and maybe Adbert Alzale, the rotation has been a little bit inconsistent. So I wanted to go through the player finder, and I wanted to kind of take a niche look at certain pitchers. So I put in players who are aged 26 through 33, left-handers who are cheap and have good hits per nine and walks per nine. And these are the main guys here. Max Freed from Atlanta is at the top of the list. I don't think his rating warrants his statistics, so maybe we aren't willing to do that. Ranger Suarez is a solid option from the Phillies, although they are in first place of their division. Ryan Yarbrough from Tampa Bay is a decent option. He's having a phenomenal year with an ERA at 2.57. Tariq Skubal's really broken out for the Tigers this year. Maybe they want to sell high. And then I also sorted through right-handers with the same age and attributes. Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns from the Brewers were two names at the top of the list. The Brewers are in first place, but both Woodruff and Burns are free agents at the end of the year. So maybe that could be an option, although they'd probably cost a lot of money. Sandy Alcantara from the Marlins is like the perfect number two starter. He's been so consistent, but he's on a super team-friendly deal, so I don't know if the Marlins would be willing to trade him. Former Guardian Zach Plesak is a solid option. He was part of the Cattell Marte trade a couple years ago. Maybe you want to bring him back. Going back to the Marlins, Pablo Lopez is another guy who's been super consistent over the past half decade. He is a free agent at the end of the year. The Marlins aren't that good. Maybe that could make sense. So the two guys who enticed the most were Ranger Suarez and Sandy Alcantara. I really wanted to get a deal for Alcantara, but, I mean, just look at the trade finder. The Marlins are asking for Classe, Espino, and Valera. Clearly, they value Alcantara very highly. Ranger Suarez, on the other hand, not so much. So would we rather the worst pitcher or the more expensive one who is going to cost a lot more? I tried putting in some different combinations for Alcantara. I was able to figure out pretty early on it just wasn't going to happen. And then as for Ranger Suarez, I was able to find fair value. But the more I thought about it, I don't think it makes sense for the Phillies. They're winning their division while they trade their number two starter. So then I ended up making a different deal, which I think a lot of people are probably going to be surprised at, but hopefully like. So we will be acquiring Max Freed and Dansby Swanson from the Atlanta Braves in a five-player deal. The Braves are in the exact same position that we are. They're in second place in their division. They're the number one wild card in the National League. But the Braves always are five steps ahead of everybody. They love thinking in the long term. They always pay their stars early. And with these two guys being towards the end of their deals, I'm not so sure how willing they're going to be to bring them back. Max Freed is a free agent at the end of the year. He's been a little bit disappointing the past couple of seasons. I don't think Atlanta's going to want to pay him ace money, whereas I think we'd be a little bit more inclined to do that. Freed is a 90 overall. He's in the prime of his career, and he's a lefty. We do not have any lefties in the rotation. So that's a big deal for us. And then as for Dansby Swanson, he was on the trade block. The Braves have been wanting to deal him for a while because they have a lot of infielders ahead of him. Ozzy Alpes, Carlos Correa, Hassan Kim. They don't need Dansby Swanson. He's a luxury for them. Whereas for us, I think he can play a pretty big role. He's only hitting 226, but his offense is better than his numbers suggest. He's gotten an extra base hit in over 10% of his plate appearances this year, and he's not a free agent at the end of the season. He's on a pretty team-friendly deal for this season and next season, so he can be a piece for us for the next year and a half. And, of course, he has a great glove at shortstop as well. 
We're going to be giving up three players here, including Cal Quantrill, who's been very solid over this series, but I see Max Freed as an upgrade, but this way, the Braves are still getting a Major League caliber starter. We're also going to be sending away Andres Jimenez, who's been a little bit better since his smaller role, but I think he can be the younger version of Dansby Swanson for them and maybe take over as a long-term second baseman once Ozzie Albee's contract is up. I think Gabriel Arias is a very talented shortstop prospect. I just don't see a future for him here. Whereas for the Braves, they're a little bit older in the middle infield with Carlos Correa's deal up at the end of the year and Hassan Kim not getting any younger. So I think this trade makes a lot of sense for both sides. We're getting, in my opinion, the two best players in the deal. And the Braves are giving up on two players who they don't see as their long-term pieces, and they're still getting major league contributors. I ended up making another trade here with the Baltimore Orioles, in which we'll be sending away 25-year-old starting pitching prospect Xavion Curry, who's been maybe the best pitcher in all of minor league baseball this season. He's earned an opportunity to pitch at the big league level, but I just don't really see a spot for him here. So I put him on the 40-man roster, and I'm going to be sending him to a team who needs starting pitching in exchange for Dylan Tate out of the bullpen. This is going to be a huge addition to our relief system. I mean, look at his numbers. Since 2022, he's had an ERA below three every season. And look at the innings pitched. Over 100 in each of the first two seasons of this series. And this year, he's on pace for well over 100. I mean, you talk about workload and production with him. Very high level. We'll also be getting 18-year-old starting pitching prospect Francisco Acevedo. He throws absolute gas. Enough said. So those are going to be the two trades we make. I really, really like them for the short and long term. I think Freed, Swanson, and Tate are going to be big pieces for us. Here are some of the other deals around the majors throughout the past month or so. I think the most notable thing here is the Twins are trading away their entire future for, like, no reason. They gave up a couple of their really good young pieces in Blake Clinyard and Sancho Andrade. And it's unfortunate for them because the Twins are one of the worst teams in baseball. So I don't really know why they're doing it, but... Okay, you do you, I guess, Minnesota. But overall, I think we had a really good deadline. We didn't give up anybody that valuable. And we got better, in my opinion. But we do have some more roster moves to make. We have 27 players on the big league roster. Elliot Ramos will be going down to AAA. He started the year off really well, but he's been pretty meh since, like, June. So he's going to get some more bats down in the minors. Alex Vesia will also go down. He's been fine, but... We don't really need him since we just got Dylan Tate. Bobby Bradley will also be going down to the minors. So that's three players going down to AAA, two players going up to the majors, one of whom will be Josh Naylor, who's been very good down in Columbus. And then Will Benson's going to get his first opportunity at the big leagues. He's been very good in the minors. He'll mainly be used as a bench bat in the outfield for now. If he plays well enough, maybe he'll get a bigger role. So the lineup for the most part doesn't really change too much. I think for now we're going to have Swanson and Manuel Margot platoon with each other along with, obviously, the catchers platooning, and then the other seven players will be everyday starters. Max Freed will enter the rotation. Dylan Tate will enter the bullpen, and they will keep their same roles that they had on their previous teams. We're going to play in Max Freed's debut against the Toronto Blue Jays. I simulated the next two games, beat the Royals, and we lost to Toronto. So we ended up splitting those games. Dan P. Swanson in his Cleveland debut went two for four. Then in the second game, he went one for four. So not bad. Three singles so far for Dan P. Pretty solid. That'll bring us to the third game since the trade deadline. Game two of a three-game set here at home at Progressive Field against the Toronto Blue Jays. We have history with the Blue Jays. We played them last year in the ALDS. It was a hard-fought five-game series that we ultimately lost. The Blue Jays are also currently the second wild card behind us, so we may see these guys again come October. Will Benson's making his big league debut today. Max Freed is making his Guardians debut. Dansby Swanson's playing in his third game as a Guardian, so a lot of new faces here for Cleveland getting an early opportunity to play as we look at both lineups. Benson batting in the nine hole. One spot behind Dansby Swanson, who will be hitting eighth today. No friend, Mel Reyes, he'll be getting the day off. Here is Max Freed, who's been a little bit underwhelming this season with Atlanta. The numbers aren't horrible, but you'd hope for a little bit more from a 90-plus starting pitcher who's probably going to ask for a lot of money this offseason. We've got to figure out if we want to pay him. His day does not start off great as Michael A. Taylor opens up the game with a single and a right. Taylor was acquired earlier in the month from the Cubs in exchange for infield prospect Relvis Martinez. Here's Kevin Biggio. He goes down of a 12-6 curve, a little lefty-on-lefty lefty crime. We have not had a consistent lefty in the rotation this entire series, so it's nice to see Freed looking good early as he strikes out Vladimir Guerrero Jr. We hope that would have been Blake Snell, but he got injured at the beginning of the season. 
Here is Kevin Gossman starting for Toronto. He's been great this year. 2.6 ERA, 1.19 whip. Looking like a legitimate Cy Young candidate this year for the Blue Jays. As Cattell Marte leads it off, he draws a walk. Marte, of course, played very well last year in the playoffs against the Blue Jays. Pretty much nobody else on the offense was good in that series, but I digress. With two away, Jose Ramirez drills a walk as well, so that's two guys on, two away. A big opportunity here for Jesus Sanchez with a 2-2 count, and he strikes out on the outside splitter. Nice pitch from Gossman. No score here through one. Both pitchers looking pretty good early on as we go to the second. Here's David Green swinging at the high heat. Nice pitch from Freed. He looks pretty good so far. Hopefully this change of scenery for Freed can really help him progress into the 30s of his career. Ramon Ramiro up to the plate here in the bottom half of the inning. Gets that one by the third baseman for a base knock into left field. So a single for Ramon Ramirez, who has continued to play well really through the entire month of July. It has been great to see his development. With two away, Will Benson hits this one into gap for extra bases. The first big league hit for Benson as Ramiro looks to head home. The throw from the cutoff man is in time. They got him. Will Benson's first big league hit is spoiled by great defense from the Blue Jays. Unfortunately, they're only going to rule that as a single for Benson. But at least we can say he is a career batting average of 1,000 and a career OPS of 2,000. It probably won't stay that high forever, but we can enjoy it for now. Still scoreless going into the top of the third inning. Max Freed looking to continue his hot start here against Steven Souza Jr. And he checks his swing on the 12-6 curve. Souza slow out of the box. I don't know what he was waiting for, but okay. <laughs> Bottom of the third now, Cattell Marte leads off for Cleveland. He goes down on the circle change. We're being treated to a full-on pitcher's duel right now. Gossman is dealing for Toronto. Freed is dealing for Cleveland. George Valera strikes out for a second time today, swinging a little bit too early there on the splitter. And then Josh Bell with two away draws a walk. So he is aboard. At least Cleveland is drawing walks, even though they can't hit the ball at all. Just like last year against the Blue Jays in the playoffs, as Jose Ramirez goes down looking on the low and outside splitter. Three scoreless for both pitchers. Let's see if either offense can break through in the fourth. Biggio swinging at some junk. That pitch up and away in the zone. I don't know what he was thinking there. That'll bring you up Vladimir Guerrero Jr. He goes down on the slider as well. That slider tonight has been filthy. Freed has phenomenal break on his pitches as he faces off against Bo Bichette. Hits this one into right. And Will Benson completely misplays it. A rookie mistake for Benson in his big league debut as Bichette round second, heads to third. Will Benson's got a cannon of an arm, but not quite cannony enough. I know that's not a word for Bichette to make it to third. Won't really matter, however, as Teoscar Hernandez flies out to right. Benson makes the play. Another shutout inning for Max Free, who continues his excellent Cleveland debut. Bottom of the fourth, full count here for Ramon Romero. He draws a walk. Tough pitch to lay off, but Ramiro's got such a good eye at just 19 years old. That'll bring up the catcher, Luis Campusano. Ground to short. 6-4-3. Double play. That'll end inning number four. Still no score. Gossman and Freed are continuing their dominance. Let's move to the fifth. One away for David Green, who launches a moonshot in the left center field. This one is out of here, and we finally have runs. Green with his 12th home run of the season, and the Blue Jays are on the board, 1-0. Great swing from Green, and the shutout from Max Freed is over just like that. Bottom of the fifth, Will Benson draws a walk, so he has reached base, and each of his first two at-bats with a base hit and a walk. Not too bad for the new kid on the block. That'll bring up Cattell Marte, who rips that one past the glove of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for a base hit. So now the Guardians have two runners on base here and a big opportunity for the number two hitter, George Valera, who on a 2-2 count will capitalize as this one goes in the left center gap. This one could score two as it looks like it'll be extra bases for Valera. Benson scores. Marte looking to join him. He slides safe. A two-run double for George Valera. And the Guardians now lead this game 2-1 as Swanson and Ramiro are fired up just outside of the dugout. 
Two away, runner on third for Jose Ramirez. Grounds it to first. Guerrero bobbles it, flips it over to Gossman. Still a pretty good inning as the Guardians scored two off of a huge two-run double from George Valera. Into the sixth, here's Michael A. Taylor hitting this one nicely in a right field for a base hit. Doesn't want to test the arm of Will Benson. I don't blame him, so he's going to hold up at first. Freed is starting to not pitch as well as Taylor heads for second. I've got to assume Cleveland is going to start to get the bullpen a little bit active as Freed's pitch count continues to get higher, and he continues to allow base runners. There's another one, infield single for Kevin Biggio. So Toronto opens up the inning with two runners on base. Guerrero lines it to third. Nice play by Jose Ramirez for the first out of the inning. Feels like the past like few videos, Jose Ramirez has made a highlight defensive play in every one. This hit will drop into right from Bo Bichette for a single. Benson nearly was able to throw out the runner, but he kind of hesitated. So now with one away, the bases are loaded. Max Freed remains in the game as Teoscar Hernandez checks his swing for strike three. Freed is now at 93 pitches as he faces off against Kuate Lumia, who grounds it to short. Swanson fields it cleanly, and the Blue Jays lead the bases loaded without scoring anybody in this sixth inning. That'll end Max Freed's day. Six innings, one earned run. Pretty damn good first impression for the Southpaw. Bottom of the sixth. Jesus Sanchez leads off the inning full count pitch. Umpire says he did not go around, so that'll be a leadoff walk. Yimmy Garcia is now on the mound for Toronto. Kevin Gossman's day is also over. Ramon Romero up. He goes down to the high fastball at 97. Great pitch right on the edge of his zone from Garcia. One away for Luis Campusano. He goes down looking on the outside curveball. Another great pitch there. And then that'll bring up the new shortstop, Dansby Swanson. He strikes out as well. So other than the leadoff walk, Garcia strikes out the next three batters. And we go to the seventh. Dylan Tate is in for Cleveland. His first appearance as a Guardian. He's pitched in 69. Nice game so far this season with Baltimore. And his inning would start off pretty well. Two away for Stephen Souza. He'll draw a walk, so if two away, that'll bring up Michael A. Taylor. He strikes out on the slider. Pretty good inning for Dylan Tate. Not a bad start to his Cleveland career as we go to the bottom half of the inning. Tim Meza is in for Toronto. He faces all against Will Benson, who grounds it to third. Good contact against the lefty. Benson usually isn't that good against lefties. However, unfortunately, his batting average is no longer at 1,000. That's his first career out. Cattell Marte draws a walk, his second, so he is on base. That'll bring up the pinch hitter, Fran Mill Reyes, who crushes this one into center field. Back at the track at the wall, it's gone. What a play from Fran Mill Reyes entering the game off the bench, making his presence felt with his 32nd home run of the year, 423-foot moonshot for the home run derby champion, and it's now 4-1. to one. Look at this cool angle of the home run. By the Franimal, who did not get the start today, but took advantage of entering the game late. The all-star Camilo Duvall enters here in the 8 for Cleveland. ERA just above 2 as he gets Kevin Biggio to go down looking on the slider. 2 away for Bichette. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Again, it's the slider. Great inning for the Guardians as Duvall retires the side. Bottom of the eighth now, Trevor Richards is in for the Blue Jays' ninth appearance of the year in eight innings. He's allowed four runs so far. So in other words, pretty mid as he plunks Luis Campusano. The Guardians already had a runner on base, so now that's two aboard. And that'll bring up Will Benson with two away. Who hits this one pretty nicely in the right center. Don't think it quite has the carry, and it will be caught. So that'll bring us into the ninth inning. 4-1 is your ball game. And Cleveland will bring in the closer, Emmanuel Classe, who is 33 of 35 on save ops this season with a 2.03 ERA. He has had another ridiculously good season out of the bullpen here for Cleveland as he strikes out Teoscar Hernandez to open things up. Two away now for David Green. Flies this one into right. Will Benson under it. And the Cleveland Guardians will win it. 4-1, your final score. Good win here for Cleveland. Max Freed was very good in his team debut. Dylan Tate was very good in his team debut. Will Benson had a pretty good Major League debut for the most part. One for two, the base hit and a walk. 
Overall, a good win. We were certainly led by the pitching today. Toronto's offense really wasn't all that great. Our offense, for the most part, wasn't very good either. Four runs, five hits. Toronto's pitching was honestly really impressive. Kevin Gossman with five good innings. He's going to get the loss, but he still pitched pretty well. And the bullpen, for the most part, was solid enough. But we hit... Big opportunistic hits when we needed to. The big double by Valera in the fifth, and the home run by Reyes in the seventh to pretty much clinch it. Shout out Freed, Tate, Duvall, and Klasse, an all-star cast of pitchers who all pitched very well today. We're going to simulate the next eight games all at home. Two more against the Blue Jays, three against Kansas City, and then three against the Arizona Diamondbacks. We went four and four in that span. You know how I was talking about our rotation being inconsistent? In the next three games, we allowed 12, 13, and 11. It's great having guys like Shane Bieber and Max three to the rotation, but you don't always know what you're going to get with the other guys. And obviously, we did not have their eight games in those three matchups. At least we went four and one in the next five. But unfortunately, we didn't really make up any ground. We actually lost out. We were, I think, only down by four and a half. Now we're down by nine and a half against the White Sox, who have won 13 in a row. They're playing out of their minds right now, so it's not looking good for us. We're still the number one wild card. A lot of the teams in wild card hunt have been struggling since the deadline, so I suppose that is good news. So that'll wrap up the episode. I think next time we're going to get through the rest of August. Next episode will probably be international free agency. I am not going to guarantee that, but that is the plan. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let me know what you thought of our trade deadline down below in the comments. Peace out.